We know how to compute derivatives using the limit definition, but this is a labor-intensive process. Our goal is to start developing tools to make derivative computations easier, largely by reducing computations to things that we've already done. In this video, we're going to talk about linearity of the derivative, which is the simplest of our derivative tools. So let's start by recalling how we add and scalar multiply two functions. If we're given two functions, f and g, then we define their sum, f plus g, pointwise. That is, we evaluate the functions at the point of interest, then we add them together. If alpha is a real number, then we define the function alpha f pointwise as well, by multiplying alpha into f of c. Concretely, let's take f of x to be x squared and g of x to be 1 over root x. Evaluating their sum at 4, we evaluate each function separately and add them together. Now, I'm not going to simplify this anymore since I'm just showing you how this works. If we do negative 3 times f, also evaluated at 4, we'd compute negative 3 times f of 4, giving negative 48. Now we want to look at how the derivative interacts with these two operations, and it turns out that they play pretty nicely with one another. We'll start by supposing that we have two differentiable functions, f and g. First up is the sum, which is also differentiable, and the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. The scalar multiple is almost identical. Alpha f is differentiable for any choice of real number, and the derivative of the scalar multiple is the scalar multiple of the derivative. We've seen before that the derivative of 2x squared minus 4 is 4x. Let's see if we can use that information to find the derivative of x squared. Our goal is to write g in terms of f, which I've worked out ahead of time as follows. Now this isn't trivial, but it's not too bad. So I want you to be sure that you give it a shot yourself and are comfortable with this sort of manipulation. Differentiating g in this form will allow me to use part one of the theorem above and split the derivative into the sums of these two functions. The derivative of any constant function is zero, and you should check this if you haven't already. So using part two of the theorem, I'm gonna bring that one half factor out of the derivative. And using the fact now that the derivative of f is 4x, we get our answer of 2x. As another example, let's differentiate the function x plus 1 over x. Now I recommend that you try to do this from scratch, just, you know, for the practice. But we're going to be more clever than that. Note that we can rewrite this function as 1 plus 1 over x. Again, if you haven't done it already, I recommend checking that the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. And since the derivative of a constant function is 0, we conclude that the derivative of x plus 1 over x is the same as 1 over x, namely negative 1 over x squared. So linearity is the first of our derivative tools, and it allows us to combine functions using addition and scalar multiplication. 